I drew a special moose permit in Alaska that allows me to hunt in the five mile corridor on either side of the Dalton Highway. So normally on the Dalton Highway, if you go five miles to either side within that corridor, you have to hunt archery only for both caribou and moose. But for the moose portion of it, you have to draw a special permit, which I drew, which is super exciting. So it has to be archery and we have this sweet roadway to base our hunts off of. But with me is Michael, who's filming right now, and then Kara, who got a caribou tag. And caribou is just over the counter, but again, it's archery within the five mile corridor of the highway. If you go outside of the five mile corridor, you can use a rifle. We didn't bring rifles though, so we're doing all archery. We just picked up some groceries in the Fairbanks Costco. And uh, one thing we're gonna try to do on this trip is, for me, I'm always curious about how much is it gonna cost to do an on your own trip like this? So we're going all public land, all on our own up here, but it's still very expensive. But we're gonna try to do it fairly cheap. We're gonna add up all of the costs associated with this trip in a running tally on the screen. So, so far, we have our plane tickets. There's three of us, plane tickets for $468 a piece. We just went to Sportsman's and bought all of the tags that we needed. So, $160 a piece for hunting license, times three. Fishing for 14 days, $105 times three. Moose locking tag, $800. Caribou locking tag for Kara, $650. Just went to the grocery store, and we're gonna, we, this is one stop of two though. At Costco, we spent $205. So whatever we're at now, oh, rental truck. We rented this pickup. That is, I wanna say it was $1,760 for the whole 10 days. So we got a good running tally, but remember it's three people. The truck uh, is expensive. That's one where we might've not gone the cheapest route. I think people will rent U-Hauls I looked it up, I remember looking it up a long time ago and it was cheaper to do a U-Haul, but this seemed like a really nice option. It was a, a worthy upgrade to me. Oh, another cost I have already is $200 to reserve a spot on a refrigerated truck on the way home uh, to drive my moose back if I get one to Bozeman. So actually to Butte, but anyway, back to the States. So $200 there, it's gonna be another $600 if I utilize that service. Racking them up, it's a lot of costs. What am I forgetting, did I forget anything yet? We're gonna have fuel, we're gonna have fuel, we have food costs, we spent 20 bucks on food. Uh, just like, to eat now. Uh, just, yeah, I wanna like tally, oh, baggage. Airport baggage, 500 even, was it five even? So 170 times three, five, 10, whoop. Whoever's editing this, please multiply 170 times three and add it to the total. total. All right, so that's where we're at currently. It's gonna keep going up. We'll see how cheap we can make this whole trip. Archery target, $20. Another luxury item for sure, but we wanna make sure our bows are on. $200, 30 cents, $200. Uh, there's some luxury or items that you could pack. We bought a cheap propane stove, propane fuel. We had to buy. We have to buy all your fuel up here. We brought, brought an extra gas can, which was borderline, but I feel like we needed it. We bought a bunch of water jugs for convenience, um, which is is what it is. We're gonna filter a lot. We didn't buy enough for that whole trip, but, but I think we're good. We're gonna start heading north and find a moose. Hopefully, find maybe a moose. caribou. Either way, we're gonna find something. We got a pretty late start out of Fairbanks, so we didn't make it as far as I wanted. But I'm in tired, so. I'm gonna pull over and sleep, wake up when it gets light and get up there. We're not quite to my unit yet, but we're getting there. Hey guys, what's up? Yeah, in there. Oh, good morning. <laughs> Hi. We are 
on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Word of advice, when you're trying to set up a non-freestanding tent, don't set it up in a pile of rocks. <laughs> I was like half asleep last night, just like, I hate this. I don't know what I'm doing. It's like half asleep trying to shove stakes into pure rock. It doesn't work real well. So it's kind of, it, it's there and we slept in it. But anyway, we got two more hours till we get to the unit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We got some coffee going. We're heading that way. Cool. <laughs> Sounds good. This is our uh, first morning up here. We flew in yesterday, drove up north a little bit. I uh, hit the road this morning and we got another hour and a half-ish to, to where my unit starts, but it's sweet. I'm pumped. <laughs> Last year I had a moose permit, just a over-the-counter one in Alaska with a rifle, and I couldn't get it done with a rifle, so I figured it'd probably be best to switch it up and take archery tackle. And also there's more restrictions here. It has to be a 50-inch bull or four brow tines, so got <laughs> a lot of a lot of things that we gotta get to to find a legal moose, but it's all right. We're in Alaska. We can shoot ptarmigan. We got fishing licenses. There's a bunch of creeks and rivers and lakes and it's going to be caribou and moose everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but hopefully we'll see some animals. We saw a moose last night. Maybe it was a fishing game decoy. We don't know. It was just out of Fairbanks. <laughs> uh, but here we go. What do you think, Harry? Tell us your, tell us your thoughts. What do, you, what do you think about Alaska so far? This is your first time. It's Kara's first time in Alaska. Yeah. What do you think? It's pretty. Yeah? Yeah. That's all? Yeah, I'm sleepy and hungry and tired. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a good time. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It's already really pretty. Yeah, it is. So that's the pipeline, people. Mm -hmm. This thing goes really, really far away. It's yeah. Right there. Oil pipeline. They I want to say it's like in the 70s or 80s they built a pipeline that goes the whole length of Alaska, which is insane. It is a pretty big mark on the landscape, but at the same time, that's the reason that we are able to drive this road and hunt, do the hunt we're doing for a lot cheaper than most Alaska moose hunts. We're in Coldfoot, which is the last gas on this highway until you get all the way to Dead Horse, which is the end of the road, Purdue Bay, Arctic Ocean. So we filled up as much as we could, over $100 worth of fuel, got some coffee. We just met some awesome people from Prince of Wales and Anchorage who gave us a little intel, gave us a little lowdown on the area, very helpful. I'm feeling pretty good. They said the moose hunting is probably going to be tough though. So <laughs> I got that going for it. But we might head north and uh, see if we can find a few caribou. We got uh, three days for of the season left up there and then uh, for non-residents anyway. And then south, we can hunt south of the pass though uh, later. So I don't know. I'm excited. We're in Alaska. We can start hunting now. We got, we're in our unit for moose. We can hunt caribou. Kara's gonna shoot a big old bull caribou. I'm gonna get a little caribou. <laughs> <laughs> non -re residents can shoot like five a day or something of any caribou, and Kara's got there's gotta be one caribou, or you can shoot two, but it, we only have one tag, but it's gotta be a bull. So we gotta find a bull caribou, a bull moose. The moose has gotta be giant. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited though. We're on the highway, we got a full tank of gas, we're ready to roll. And I think this guy is waiting for us to move. <laughs> oh, we're not quite to the caribou country yet though. It sounds like it's a little north, but we did see some camps. There's other people around. I don't know if they're the other moose take holders. There's not very, there's not very many permits in this area, but there are a number. So 
probably what they're doing, I'm guessing. It sucks because the one spot that I was most excited about is basically where everyone is camped. So I assume that everyone read the same online blogs and articles that I did. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> um, so well, we're going to go look for caribou for the rest of the day and then probably come back down depending on what happens up there. We're just, no, no concrete plans. Just kind of seeing what happens. We've got to go find some animals somewhere. Last year when we were moose hunting, be glassing forever, just waiting to see something and just kind of like have the search image of just picking apart the landscape. And then when one finally came into view, it would just be so much bigger than I was expecting. It's just like, oh, you'll you'll know when they're in sight. Like that, that's a moose. <laughs> but nothing yet. Look at those homeboys. Oh my God. So Kara sees doll sheep, and then Michael spots a grizzly bear while looking for the doll <laughs> sheep, and then Kara's looking around and finds two caribou over here. This is looking good. This is a good animal spot. You got foxes. Oh yeah, no, I didn't even tell the story about the fox. That fox is cool. And then, yeah, there's critters everywhere. So we've heard that uh, there's no point in chasing caribou that are walking away from you, and now I can kind of see why. Those guys were just like, wandering around and then they just booked it that way like there's no way you're getting over there i could they've already covered like a half mile just when we we're watching them and then unless they're coming towards you i don't think it would work I, I don't know how you would get on them so it's that seems to be accurate what we've heard of not being able to follow a caribou and actually catch up to it so we might have to find some others, but this is super cool. We're in them. We're in wildlife. I like seeing animals. We stopped and started glassing, and there was something white just hauling ass across the hill, and it was a wolf. And then Kara saw a caribou running out in front of the wolf, and then there's a lone caribou over here, more caribou. Kara just spots more caribou this way, so we found the caribou. Uh, they're a long, ways a long ways away, and there's a river between us and them, but... Not these ones, I don't think, so. Yeah, that's sweet. We're finding, finding caribou. Uh, we're driving down the road and uh, just look up and there's three caribou coming over the skyline. I mean, they're only 600 yards away right now and they're coming down pretty much straight towards us. <laughs> I can't tell, the, they ha two of them have decent, I mean, they're little, but I can't tell if they're bulls or cows. It's, we're looking right into the sun, so we're gonna go get close and try to get ahead of them. And, uh, make an assessment, see if there's a bull, or, bull in there that Kara can shoot. Or I don't, I don't know, I might shoot one. <laughs> Probably won't. I'm gonna take my bow just in case. They're kind of just feeding. Yeah. the cow and the I wonder if we just bust up there let's just get up there because that bull is in the back still in velvet Sweet though. I mean, I could see how you can make it work though, you know, mm -hmm. if we had got here earlier and they, yeah, you know, they knew we were in the area though. Yeah. But they were like, this feed, and I, I could see how you just gotta get ahead of them and it get the really wind. Flat, though, once you're out here. Oh, yeah. There's not a lot of cover to do. It's no, I think though. if we could have like got to that bush, you know, and it's like chilled. But getting to that bush would have been hard, and then they would have had to come within boat. I mean, there's a lot. I think it's gonna be a lot of luck. A huge shadow right now too. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really have the sun at our advantage. But and even like getting a shot, like if it was standing 40 yards ahead of me right now, I couldn't shoot. Like if it was 20 yards ahead of me, I couldn't shoot. It's just yeah. it's just blinding. Yeah. Like I'd ha you'd have to like place the sun right behind it.
Uh, Michael just spotted four caribou right off the road, right under the pipeline. But it looks like just uh, three cows and a calf, so I don't know. This is crazy. I don't know if, just, if this is what it's always like. They're just everywhere, but I guess we just drive and drive until we find a bull right off the road. If it's a bull, it's a real little one. The wind is exactly wrong. We're not sure if it's a cow or a bull yet. <laughs> Shoot the oh, it's, spot up. it's looking real good. Oh, I guess, yeah, we could do that. Saw a little penis poking out being. <laughs> it's a boy. <laughs> Let's go try to shoot this. One forty taken. What's a caribou call? <laughs> I'd say we just kind of flank him for a while and see if he gets curious again. Like maybe not go direct at him, but. Try again tomorrow hmm. or, or tonight. There's another one down the road. <laughs> Delio is a fine, fun place to camp. It's not the greatest spot to camp right next to the pipeline, but found a pull off, so we're off the road. And there's kind of a flat spot that I think we can get tent stakes in, which is about as best as we're gonna find for tonight. But yeah, get this tent set up. Might start a little fire, get a little wood stove action. It's kind of cold. We'll see. But anyway, chilly. Yeah. And uh, eat some dinner. Michael's capturing footage. All the, that was an amazing day. Like, a uh, really incredible day. I'm sorry, I'm putting my release away so I don't forget it. But we saw so many critters. Like, all the critters. Lots of critters. Really cool country. We got a whole drive through of the unit of the moose unit and then into some caribou hunting i think we're gonna have a fun day at caribou hunting tomorrow oh yeah that's the plan see you tomorrow yeah see you tomorrow